But throughout his life, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu only wrote eight verses. But he empowered the six Goswamis to take the essence of his teachings, which is that the goal of life is pure bhakti, pure devotion to the personality of Godhead. That this human form of life is not meant for sense enjoyment. Why? Because we are not these bodies which are growing old, getting diseased and are about to die. Instead of wasting this valuable human life decorating these dead bodies, we should obtain the real happiness that human life affords us by awakening pure bhakti, pure devotion to Krishna from within our hearts. And in the age of Kali Yuga, there was one process which is simple and available to everyone. And that is the chanting of the holy name of Lord Hari. Now, of course, this is a very simple formula. But it is explained that it is the essence of all the Vedic knowledge. And therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu specifically instructed Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami to carefully and analytically study all the principal Vedic literatures and prove how the essence of all knowledge is pure devotional service to Sri Krishna and how the only means of obtaining that in the age of Kali Yuga is through the chanting of the Holy Name. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was at Prayag, Allahabad, he instructed Srila Rupa Goswami for 15 days at the Dasasvamedha Ghat. In fact, for those of you who are interested, the very exact place where Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Lanka Goswami sat for 15 days is still present today. Last year when we went to the Kumbha Mela at the Triveni Sangam, we visited that holy place. It is only a few minutes walk from the holy confluence of the Ganges, the Jamuna, and the Saraswati. And there, the footprints of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are present. And it is designated that sitting on this very spot, the Lord instructed Rupa Goswami. Very close to the same time, in the holy city of Kashi. For one month, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Srila Sanatana Goswami. Very systematically, he explained the goal of life and how to obtain it. And then by his causes mercy to all living beings, he sent Rupa and Sanatana to the holy city of Vrindavan. Of course, in those days, it was not a city. It was just the jungle. There was hardly even a few very saintly persons who were living in that jungle. And the divine places of Sri Krishna's Leela were practically lost to the people in general. So Lord Gaurasundar instructed Rupa and Sanatana 
that you go to Brajadham. And there I have a great mission for you. Few places where Krishna performed his various pastimes. Make them into holy places of pilgrimage so that people from all over the world can come to take shelter of the Holy Dham, to worship the Lord's Leela, the Lord's Dham, and to become purified. Also, you establish beautiful temples and establish the proper standard of how to worship the deity of Lord Sri Krishna and Sri Radharani with great love. And Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya told them that I also want you to establish through your teachings and through your lives the perfect behavior for a Vaishnava devotee of the Lord and the proper etiquette in which Vaishnavas should treat one another. At that time, Rupa Goswami was traveling with the third brother. There were three brothers. The eldest brother was Sanatan, then there was Rupa, and there was another brother of the name Anupam. These brothers went to Vrindavan, but on the order of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rupa and Anupam came back to Jagannath Puri by foot to visit Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And on the way, Anupam contracted a sickness and he left this world to re-enter into the spiritual world of Vaikuntha. But Anupam had one son. He was a very young boy at the time. But he was not an ordinary boy. In fact, it is described that when Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended onto this earth, along with him he brought his eternal associates from Goloka Vrindavan. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combined forms of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. And just as he descended, he also brought his elder brother Balaram in the form of Lord Nityananda. Narada Muni appeared as Sri Vastapur. Karanodakshai Vishnu appeared as Sri Advaita Acharya. <laughs> the intimate expansion of the pleasure potency of Sri Radharani appeared as Gadadhara Pandit. There is a book by the son of Shivananda saying, Kavikarnapur. It is called the Goraganodeshti Dika. And there it describes all of the various associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and who they were in Lord Sri Krishna's Leela. So this son of Anupam. He was none other than one of the principal Manjari gopis, the most confidential maidservants of Radharani. That most illustrious servant of Sri Radha, Sri Radhika, the last Manjari gopi, descended into this world and took the form of Srila Jiva Goswami. It is described that after Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left this world,
just after the final pastimes of the Lord. Srila Jiva Goswami, hearing the news of Lord Gorasunda's departure, became overwhelmed with separation from the Lord. It was unbearable. Just like when in this world we love someone very dearly, separation from that person is like a burning fire within our heart. But understand that this is the limited perverted reflection of real love. Love. Therefore, Jiva Goswami, when he heard the news that Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had left this world, knowing that he would never ever again be able to see him, he became like a madman in separation. He was weeping, he was crying. He did not know whether he would live or die. He did not know whether he should live or die. He was delirious. So he decided that he would leave his home in Bengal and go to the holy land of Navadweep. Because there, Lord Sri Nityananda Prabhu was still present. So it is described that as Jiva Goswami was walking down the road, he would fall down, he would faint, he would cry, he would get up, he would walk, he would fall down, he would cry, he would faint. Unconscious and conscious, he was constantly surfacing and sinking into the ocean of transcendental separation from the Lord. And alas, when he came to the holy land of Sri Navadri Dham, he inquired, where is that most merciful and munificent of all personalities? Sri Nityananda Prabhu. He who out of his infinite kindness even delivered the two most sinful of all demons, Jagai and Madhai, where is he to be found? At that time, Lord Nityananda, it is described he was with some of his associates sitting under a tree He could feel by his divine transcendental cognizance that Jiva Goswami had come. So he immediately called for Jiva Goswami to come to him. And the service of Nityananda found Sri Jiva. And when Jiva Goswami saw the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Ah. He became enraptured in divine happiness. He fell at those lotus feet, crying tears of love. He began to offer beautiful prayers full of devotion. Jiva Goswami, with his own lotus hands, he lifted I mean, Nityananda Prabhu, with his own lotus hands, he lifted Jiva Goswami and embraced him. And then it was agreed that Lord Nityananda would personally take Jiva Goswami to all of the holy places of Sri Navadvipdham and reveal to him the divine Leela of Sri Gaurahari. So for many, many days, as Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur writes in his Sri Navadvip Mahatmya, 
Lord Nityananda Prabhu described the most intimate Leela of Sri Chaitanya. Place after place after place to the great pleasure of Srila Jiva Goswami. It is described that the love of a devotee attracts the mercy of Krishna. Although Krishna is the supreme most attractive and he is attracting the hearts of all living beings, he is eternally attracted by the devotion of his servants. So as Lord Nityananda and Jiva Goswami were going from place to place, when they came to the place of Srivas Angam, a place where each and every night Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would gather his associates and they would have nocturnal kirtan. They would chant and they would dance throughout the night. As Lord Nityananda was describing these transcendental pastimes and chanting the glories of the Lord, Jiva Goswami was so anxious out of love to see this wonderful Leela of the Lord that right before his eyes, Lord Nityananda began to dance. And as he was dancing, Jiva Goswami perceived that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared and began to dance with Lord Nityananda. And then he heard Murdangas and Kartals, and he heard tumultuous voices, and he looked around, and there was Gadadhar Pandit, there was Swarup Damoda, there was Brakreshwar Pandit, there was Srivas Thakur, there was all the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with tears of love in their eyes, leap into the air with their arms raised, chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <laughs> because it is a fact, in the Holy Dham, the transcendental pastimes of the Lord are eternally taking place. And by the mercy of the great souls, they can reveal this divine Leela right before our eyes. In this way, Jiva Goswami, all of his desires were fulfilled. He fell on the ground again unconscious in very sublime ecstasy. And then he awoke and he took part in the great kirtan. And it went on. It appeared that it was going on for thousands of days of Brahma. It appeared like a never-ending kirtan. It appeared that the holy name were like waves and waves and waves just coming from the ocean with no end. And then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all of his associates disappeared from his vision. And Lord Nityananda Prabhu explained to Jiva Goswami that the Lord's pastimes are always manifesting for one whose heart is pure. So after this most famous and worshipable Harikram of Sri Mayapur and Navadvip Dham, Lord Nityananda Prabhu placed his lotus feet on the head of Srila Jiva Goswami. And he told him, Sri Jiva, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given Vrindavan to your family. Your uncles, Rupa and Sanatana, are now living in Vrindavan and you should join them and there spend the rest of your life assisting them in their spiritual mission in the service of the Lord. He said, but first you should go to Varanasi and you should study Sanskrit under a pure devotee of the Lord of the name Madhusudan Pachaspati. 
and then you continue forward to Sri Vrindavan Dham. So Jiva Goswami taking leave from Lord Nityananda Prabhu, he went to Kashi and there he studied and became the foremost scholar on all the earth. And then he proceeded to the holy land of Raj. And there he came in the association of Sri Rupa and Sri Sanatan. And together, along with Raghunath Das Goswami, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, and Gopal Bhatta Goswami, these six most illustrious personalities immortalized for all the world the life and teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is described that anyone who claims to be a follower of Lord Chaitanya must accept the instructions and the guidance of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. They are our guides. They are the gurus for all of us. After Rupa and Sanatan established in Vrindavan the mission of Sri Chaitanya, there were so many devotees. There were tens and thousands of devotees all over Vrindavan, Bengal, Orissa, in fact, all over India. And they all worshipped Rupa and Sanatan as the supreme gurus of their life. Although there were many associates who were initiating disciples. Everyone accepted Rupa and Sanatan as the leaders of the mission. You see, in those days there was no envy amongst devotees. We read in the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's servants in such books as the Bhakta Ratnakar, how there were so many great gurus in those days. Most all of them were eternal associates, gopis of Vrindavan who had descended down to this world to assist the Lord with his mission. But all of them accepted Rupa and Sanatan as their leaders. It's not that there was competition, that my guru is, why your guru is better than mine and why my guru is better than yours. No, no, no. This is all material thinking. All the Acharyas, all the Paramhamsas, they all bow to the feet of Rupa and Sanatan. And when Rupa and Sanatan, when they were called back to the spiritual world by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at that time, Jiva Goswami, like the self-manifesting sun rising in the eastern horizon, he was accepted by every Acharya, by every Paramhamsa, by every Guru, by every devotee, as the leader of the entire mission. All the millions of disciples in Bengal, in Orissa, in Vrindavan, in South India, and all around, wherever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went and preached, wherever his servants spread his message, they all accepted Jiva Goswami as the leader. Jiva Goswami, amongst the six Goswamis, was considered the greatest of all philosophers. Even great souls such as Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, who is the author of Chaitanya Charitamrita, he was the humble servant of the servant of the servants of Sri Jiva Goswami. In fact, Srila Prabhupada and all other Acharyas in the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition. They accept the works of Jiva Goswami as the most pristine philosophical masterpieces ever revealed 
on this earth. Sometimes people have a misconception that the devotees of the Lord, uh, they just like to dance and they like to chant and they like to eat too much prasad. We are very sentimental. But yoga entails much jnana and philosophical expertise. But anyone who has once even seen the works of Jiva Goswami, all of these misconceptions are destroyed. How masterly Lord Sri Krishna has empowered him to establish with the ultimate authority the most analytical philosophy explaining the supreme position of bhakti and the supreme position of the supreme personality of Godhead Sri Krishna and the supreme abode of Vrindavan. Therefore, Jiva Goswami is our guru. He is our master. He is our leader. And on this most holy and auspicious day of his disappearance, it is our very, very auspicious fortune that we are allowed to remember him. We are allowed to worship his lotus feet. And we are allowed to appreciate the great fortune we have in being the servant of the servant of the servant of his most illustrious servants. That is the supreme benediction in our life. the right to serve the lotus feet of such great souls. And it is very auspicious arrangement of Lord Sri Krishna that tonight being New Year's Eve, we can begin the year by remembering and worshiping the lotus feet of one of the great servants of Lord Sri Krishna. There is no benediction superior than the opportunity to become the servant of the servant. And all the great souls in the Vedic literatures we find, never do they ask the Lord for any material benediction. They never ask the Lord for elevation to heavenly planets. They never ask the Lord for good health. They never ask the Lord for wealth, for nice family life. They never even ask the Lord for mukti, liberation. Seldom will they ever even ask the Lord for elevation to Vaikuntha, the spiritual world. But there's only one prayer of the real, genuine devotees of the Lord. And what is that prayer? My Lord, please, with your mercy, if you desire, bless me that I may always remember you.